Don't you love those creepy, crawly things? You know, I used to look under rocks all the time in my backyard. I mentioned earlier that uh, Earth Day is this Sunday, and one way to uh, reflect on what you can do to keep our planet healthy is to head out in your own backyard. You never know what you're going to find. Will Michaels here is with us, and uh, he is a uh, Connecticut naturalist and helps to educate people to learn more about local wildlife. Will, thank you so much. All right, thanks for having me. All right, now, you, you, I understand you work a lot with school systems, and, and you've got all kinds of things going on to, to kind of let people know what is really out there in their own backyard. Right. Now, uh, all too often in Connecticut, people take our immediate surroundings and immediate habitats for granted. And uh, my goal and mission is to educate the public on the diversity of wildlife. We have right here in our own state, our own backyard, and it rivals that of the Amazon jungle or the coral reefs. What and, was it uh, that got you into this, Will? Why did you want to do it? Were you a kid always exploring or what? I was always outside in nature growing up uh, with my family and it was uh, developed into a passion of mine and uh, what really got me hooked were something vernal pools okay. which are small bodies of water uh -huh. that harbor amphibian life um, and this could be something that made to the naked eye could just look like a puddle in your backyard exactly. right? mm -hmm. and these puddles are vital for frogs and salamanders and toads Connecticut amphibians because they contain water for a, a small part of the year, yeah. which allows these amphibians to enter the water, breed and lay their eggs. And uh, this time of year, April and even back into March, is amphibian season in Connecticut, where these small pools are teeming with all types of amphibian life. And then by midsummer, these pools are dried up, they're gone. So, as we know, amphibians start life with gills breathing underwater, mm -hmm. and then they exit the pool as they transform into their lunged, air-breathing adult phase. Mm -hmm. And um, now you brought some stuff here today. Can be, before, and I also know you, have, you do some very cool video work, and you get out there and, and crawl around in there and get right. some great shots. But before we go to the video, tell me a little bit about what's actually here on uh, on our deck. Well, we have our underwater camera. Yeah that we use to film underwater of the vernal pools. And we'll take a look at those clips in a, a few seconds mm -hmm. here. Uh, this is just a helpful book about vernal pools. So you know what you're looking at, exactly, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. that's uh, very helpful in identifying species. Mm -hmm. And we just have some generic uh, nature items that you might find when you're out on a hike. Uh, White-faced hornet nests. Yep, yep. Some turtle shells. Mm -hmm. um, cool stuff. But yeah, but the, the focus here is our, our camera equipment. Yeah, well, that's it. We got to go. We got to take yeah, a look at this video look. because you did some amazing video. Let's look at it. What do we got here? Okay, right now we have a yellow spotted salamander that is migrating to a vernal pool. And these salamanders only come out one or two nights during the whole year. In Connecticut mm -hmm. so most people never get the opportunity to see a yellow spotted salamander they live deep underground for the remainder well for 363 days they're mm -hmm. underground they come out just to lay eggs during the first warm spring rains usually in March or April mm -hmm. and uh, after they lay their eggs in the pool that's when the true uh, magic happens mm -hmm. Now, some residents might be lucky if they're driving home on a, a rainy night in March in, or springtime and they see th these salamanders crossing the road. Well, they're crossing the road to get someplace and they're trying to get to these pools, which are the only place where they can reproduce. So without these pools, you know, being that it's Earth Day and we're talking about mm -hmm. environmental awareness, mm -hmm. th these pools are indicators of a um, a habitat's vitality. And uh, one, once upon a time, people would bring canaries down into mine shafts, and if the canary fainted, it was because there were toxins in the air, yep. uh, toxic gas. Well, if a vernal pool, if the species in there are, are dying off, we know that there's something in the water that is uh, harmful to the surrounding environment and habitat. And uh, the next video we'll take a look at uh, is a world rarely seen by most. We're underwater in the vernal pool and as if environmental factors, pollution, aren't enough of a, a problem for mm -hmm. these salamanders, there's tons of predators that feed on these eggs. 
And this is a caddisfly larva, which is feeding on Jefferson salamander and yellow spotted salamander eggs. Now, again, this looks like some kind of alien mm -hmm. environment, mm -hmm. and really, these are surrounding our local communities. As you said, it looks like a puddle. Yep. So you walk by a puddle, you take it for granted, but you look under the water in these shallow pools, and that's the kind of stuff you can see. Um, again, here, this just illustrates all of the interconnectivity of this microcosm. We've got a leech eating the egg, a red-spotted newt eating the egg. Those are all little uh, invertebrates filling the camera lens, all the newts feeding oh. on the invertebrates. Great. Stuff. And the larger um, water boatman beetles mm -hmm. dashing about the camera lens. Will, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't, you, you are awesome, and I know you shoot all this stuff yourself, too, and uh, we're out of time. Oh, yeah, we've well, got to get back fast. into the kitchen. If you want more information on Will Michael, the Connecticut naturalist, you can just go to WTNH.com, and you click on Connecticut style. This is, thank you so much. Thanks I love for having this. me. Thank uh, you.